guys, my name is Apprentai and welcome back to another video. Now today is National Martini Day and in order to celebrate I'm going to make three of the most common martinis for you guys, show them how they're made and then maybe you can enjoy them um, yourself at home. Now there is loads and loads and loads of different combinations of martinis, there's loads of different styles you can use, different uh, spirits, different garnishes, that sort of thing, but there is one thing that stays consistent and that is the glass you use. Obviously it's always in a martini style glass, this is the martini glass so all our drinks will be going in this today. That being said, this is what you're going to need. Okay, starting with equipment, obviously a measure, a mixing glass and a Boston tin. I'll explain why you might not need the tin later, but the glass and the tin. Double strainer, Hawthorne strainer, bar spoon, uh, teaspoon is optional, and this here is for making twists. You can use a knife, but I have this nice little twist tool here, so that's the equipment. Okay, so I have some gin here, some extra dry vermouth, some vodka, some pineapple juice, and some chambord. This is all the liquids you'll need for the three different martinis. And lastly, we have garnishes. We have maraschino cherries, cocktail cherries, a lemon, and some olives. So there's one thing you should do before you make any martini, and that is chill your glass. So, a couple of ice cubes in there. You can put some soda water, some water. I just like to put ice cubes in it. Chills it just the same. Now, once you've done that, there is two different ways you can make a martini. You can have either have it shaken or stirred. The classic James Bond line, you know, shaken, not stirred. I prefer personally to stir martinis. However, if you prefer to shake them, you can shake them. You can use a Boston tin once you've got your ingredients, obviously, and then shake it up. However, I will not be using this today. I will be stirring the martinis, which is why I have a bar spoon. If you don't have a bar spoon and you do have a tin, you can shake them instead or you can use another spoon or a teaspoon or anything. That being said, let's get on with the first martini, which is our classic martini. Okay, classic martini, we're gonna stir it up as, as I've already said. So ice in our glass, first of all. We're gonna have a double measure of gin. Now, classic martinis can be, or vary. Everyone likes martinis differently, but that's uh, 50 mils of gin. Now, the vermouth that you have in it totally depends on you as a person. Um, you can have no vermouth in it, you can have a uh, full shot of vermouth, it's totally up to yourself of what you prefer. Um, if someone does say to you though they want it extra dry, they don't mean more extra dry vermouth, they actually mean less. So, personally, I like to have a half shot of vermouth in my martinis. Uh, obviously, you can, as I said, you can use vodka instead of gin, you know, but the classic traditional is gin. So, that's in there, and then all we're going to do is just mix this round. The reason I have my hand over the glass, obviously you're heating it up. So you're slightly diluting it a wee bit more, which is the point. Okay, once you're ready, you want to empty your ice. I'm going to do a martini glass, so it's nice and chilled. You can see that nice little frosting on there. You can stick it in the fridge or the freezer up to yourself. Now, when you're stirring martinis, you only really have to single strain them. However, as a good practice, I like to double strain it anyway. There we are. Now, garnish, again, you can have a few things. You can have just an olive if you wanted, however, Personal preference coming into play again. I like a, uh, a lemon twist in mine, so that's a nice little tool here. Now this tool is really cheap and really good. However, I have sliced the um, skin off my thumb using one of these before. Very dangerous, so there we are. Nice little um, classic martini there. Okay, this is our first one. As I said, we said the classic martini, classic gin martini, should I say. As I said, you can use vodka if you want with it, but Mm. This is the most potent one as well. Obviously martinis are potent as they are, but straight up booze, essentially, wee bit of water, because obviously that's the whole point, it's shaking or stirring it, you're diluting it, but as I say, bit of lemon, bit of lemon peel, if you want as well, sometimes I literally just put a couple drops of lemon juice in as well, gives it a wee bit more of a, a bitter taste, but... Ah, mmm. I love, I love gin martinis, as you guys can tell. <sighs> Spilled it a wee bit, it's a bit cold, but on to our next one, which is the French martini. Okay, the next one is the French martini. Now, as like last time, our martini glass is chilling away here. And this one varies differently from the last one because this one is always vodka. There's no option between vodka or gin for this one. This one is always vodka. So it's two full shots, which is 50 mils. I am using Zabroka, which is a Polish bison grass vodka. You can use whichever vodka you prefer. Um, you can, if you want to use a Betty vodka or that sort of thing, or just maybe a Grey Goose, a Belvedere, something, Finlandia, whatever, you can use that. 
Then you're going to get your Shambor. Now, the Shambor varies from place to place. I'm not going to give you the perfect amount, which, you know, it's whatever you prefer, really. I always go for a full shot for 25 mils of Shambor. It also means if you do a full shot, there's a bit more booze in there. Some places do 10 mils, some places do 15, some places do a half shot. It totally varies. And the last thing is some pineapple juice. It's 50 mils of that in there. If you want to use fresh pineapple, you can. I use carton because it's a lot easier than trying to buy a ripe pineapple. This one is always shaken, never stirred. It gives it a better texture. And when you're shaking, that is what you're looking for. A nice frost in there. So I'm going to open this up. And this one is always double strained. As I say, martinis are always double strained. But because you have an ice in this one, it's more reason for it to be double strained. There we are. Beautiful. So this is why you shake it. You get this nice layer of foam on top that the pineapple juice has created. And the garnish for this one, cocktail cherry or maraschino cherries. Now, I pop one in, but I also would sometimes put a wee bit of the juice in. A wee bit extra sweet flavor in there. And this is our French martini. Okay, so here we are. I may have cheated and stuck a, a straw through a cherry just so I can, mmm. I love cocktail cherries. So juicy, so nice, so artificial, I guess, but French martini. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful flavors. You can make this weaker if you want or stronger if you want. As I say, every cocktail is always personal preference. You might want it weaker, you might want it stronger. The way to do that with this, less vodka, less chambor, more pineapple juice. You could maybe use a shot of that, a half shot of chambor, and then like three or four shots of pineapple juice. It's totally personal preference. If you don't like it that strong, you can drink it whatever way you want. So, that's the French martini. The last one is a dirty martini. Okay, and the last one we're gonna be making is a dirty martini. Again, glass is chilling away nicely there. I'm gonna be stirring this one, not shaking it. Again, if you prefer to shake it, you can shake it. Um, we're gonna be using gin again, because obviously I prefer gin martinis. If you want a vodka dirty martini, you can make a vodka one. So, there we are. Two full shots of gin in there of your choice, or vodka, um, depending on what you want. Vermouth. Now, for dirty martinis, I don't really like them. So if I do order them, I always want a wee bit extra vermouth in mine, just to kind of take away that, that flavor. So I use about three quarters of a shot. If you want to use less, you use less. If you want to use more, you use more. Now, secret ingredient to dirty martini. Olive juice. Um, I hate, 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 hate olives. Um, but nonetheless, Pop some olive juice in there. This is what makes it the dirty part. There we more. There we more. There you go. There's no strict amount. If I was drinking this properly, I'd probably put like a fact I wouldn't drink it, but I'd put very little in there. So now we're gonna give this a start, just like we did with the regular, the classic martini, until it's nice and chilled and diluted. Okay, once it's been stirred enough, obviously empty out our martini glass. I'm gonna double strain it again. As I said before, you don't need to double strain if you start. However, it's just a good practice or a good habit to get in. There we are. And a garnish for that is gonna be two olives. If you wanna put more in, you can put more. As I said, I hate olives. And here we are, our dirty martini. As I've said multiple times in the last 30 seconds, I hate dirty martinis because I hate olives. However, for you guys, I'm gonna drink it. It's gonna be like a, a gag reaction, it's gonna be a bleh, but I've gotta do it. Mm. Ow. The water just climbed my lip on that spoon, and two, that's disgusting. Not a fan. Like, if you like olives, even if you don't like olives, I know people don't like olives and like dirty martinis, but I can't handle them. I think they're disgusting. I'm not lip bleeding. You see the things I do for you guys, look. Ah. Oh. Okay, so that's pretty much gonna wrap up today's video. I'm aware my lip is bleeding pretty bad. That's why I'm gonna try and wrap up this video quite quickly. If you guys have enjoyed it, please make sure you drop a like rating. It'd be much too angry and weird. And if you wanna see more of this sort of thing on like National Gin Day or Vodka Day, do different vodka or gin drinks, please make sure you let me know in the comment section down below. A few things I wanna to touch on before I end the video. I'm back feeling myself. I don't know if you guys are aware, but there's been a lot of things going on the last couple of weeks, couple of months. 
I've not really been myself, I've not really been posting, that sort of thing. I think I'm finally at a stage where I was like back last year when I was like really motivated. Doing the whole marathon definitely burnt me out and a lot of other factors added onto that as well. But finally happy where I am at the moment. Uh, loving life, doing lots of things. So there will be constant videos again, maybe once every couple days. It's not going to be daily, uh, but maybe once every two, every three days. So if you guys want to subscribe, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you want to check any of my other social media out, links to them will be in the description. On that, guys, until next time, I've been the Prince Eye, and I'll see you in the next one.